Okay, so great seeing everybody here. Uh, for those that don't know who I am, I don't know what's wrong with you, but my name <laughs> is Brian Sovereign. Uh, I host a podcast, Sovereign Tech. I also run a blog, which is part of what I will be talking about here. The blog is called darkandroid.info. And uh, you can find out a lot of what I will be talking about here there. Uh, there is a main page there that describes everything we're talking about, so I didn't make any sheets to hand out to you, because if you do want to find out more about this, you can just go to darkandroid.info, and it, it covers a lot of what I'll be saying and lots of links, uh, and also the blog will give a lot more updated info, because this information changes all the time. Uh, this is a very important fact of the what I call the tech world, and that is that like almost on a by the second basis, not even daily, uh, the information that I could be presenting to you right now can change. So it's really important that I feel that there's a website that gets this information out there. But at the same time, it's important to be able to field questions. Uh, so I will, if anyone here has questions about what I'm saying, uh, I'm interested in hearing that. Uh, but also with Dark Android, and the, the, the idea of Dark Android is creating an Android device that is inexpensive, disposable if necessary, that's part of the inexpensive part, that is very much concerned with what I call DAPS. DAPS, D-A-P-S, Decentralization, Anonymity, Privacy, and Security. Okay, these are the goals that we're trying to reach in what maybe some people would call a post-Snowden world, or a, you know, since the Snowden revelations were suddenly, holy hell, everything's cracked, everything's busted, everything, you know, we, there's no, anonymity to be had, there's no privacy to be had, all these things. And so my mission has been, uh, as a tech journalist, is to find ways where that can be achieved, where you can still have these things, uh, and to get to the truth of the matter of what exactly a lot of the more mainstream tech news, I know we always talk about the mainstream news, how they're lying to you all the time. Well, the tech news is very little different. Uh, in tech news, like, uh, you know, sometimes even the Twit Network, as much respect as I have for them, uh, but a lot of these tech journalists are, are peddling nonsense to you as well. Uh, but the important thing with Dark Android and the place to start, and this has been a reality long before, uh, you know, the Snowden revelations, long before, uh, you know, security and a lot of this stuff was, was really even talked about so heavily as it is now, this was a fact this attitude that I want to describe to you first off that you got to have this before we even get into the hardware and the software that you can use the attitude that you have to have uh, is not new it's something that in the 90s if you grew up as a hacker in the 90s I'm not confirming or denying that I'm any such thing but in the 90s you this is what people thought and I mean today you hear the word hacker and there's that word comes with a whole lot of baggage uh, you could think that, you know, it, it's somebody that's malicious, which I would argue that's actually a cracker, and I don't mean a white person. Uh, you know, when, when I say cracker, I mean somebody that, that does, you know, that breaks into systems with malicious intent. Okay, that's a very, very different thing. Uh, but hackers back in the day, and now, like all these IT professionals, all these people, they call themselves hackers, and it's remarkable because I see them walking around with iPhones, and it's like, are you kidding me? You're telling me, you know, you're... you're, you're Somehow you're concerned with privacy, anonymity, and all this stuff, and yet you're walking around with this device uh, that has, you know, nothing of the sort baked in. Uh, so it's very questionable when you hear that term. I'm not going to use it often, but I just want to give some context to this, this ethos that used to be had in the 90s with hackers, or what maybe people may know the word cypherpunk. Anybody heard the word cypherpunk before? Okay. Yeah, I definitely come from that world. Been involved in the cypherpunk world for a very long time, since I was a teenager, and I was born in 1981, so take that for what you want. Uh, so this attitude's really important, and what I want to bring up, I'm actually going to quote uh, a real hacker, and one of the best in the business, somebody that's very, very concerned with security issues, uh, and that is Steve Gibson. He's a personal hero of mine. He runs the great podcast, Security Now. Uh, and he has, this is his quote from one of his episodes of Security Now, where he was talking about, okay, you know, the question came in, because he'll field questions, he said, so how do we go about this whole thing where we can still have, an, you know, anonymity, where we can be secure, uh, where we can have privacy? And those are all different things. Keep that in mind, that anonymity, privacy, security, all that, they are not the same. They are separate aspects. Okay, and I will, there will be time here for questions because your goals with what I'm about to describe may not be in line with the kind of full paranoid presentation that I'm giving you. 
to where this is to go all the way, or at least the best shot that we've got at going all the way to where the NSA doesn't know who you are, that that's your device, and that you know everything you're doing is encrypted. So this is from Steve Gibson, and this is about that attitude that I'm describing. Quote, so the only way, I mean, if you absolutely need anonymity, is to roll together old school approaches and new school. Go somewhere to do this as far away from home as convenient. Be anonymous there. Pay with cash. Don't go somewhere familiar. Don't know anyone. Don't make any friends. Don't talk to anyone. Don't stay long. Plan ahead. Rehearse for speed. Get it done and leave. Don't do anything that, that involves your own real world identity. That one's really, really important. Okay. Uh, pay with cash. Change the MAC address of your machine. Maybe buy a cheap laptop just for this purpose so that it knows nothing. You have no history tied to it and so forth. Now I'm going to stop there. There's more to it than I want to read, okay? But where he says buy a cheap laptop that is just for this, that's exactly what we're talking about with Dark Android. It is the cheapest device you can find is a little Android tablet or maybe a phone without a SIM card in it or something like that. And that will allow for what we're describing here. Okay, uh, I'm going to read the, the rest of the quote. And I would say, since you have control over Tor, use more than three nodes. Now, this is important. Tor can be used on Android devices. Reading on, don't use the default settings. Use as many as you can so that you're, oh, and use a widely geographically dispersed Tor nodes. Those will be slower because all the traffic bouncing around has to go through all of those locations. If you don't know about Tor, don't worry about it. We'll get to it. So, yes, it's not going to be as quick and easy. This is not going to be quick and easy. Really important. But to get anonymity, it can't be. Really key. Do what you need to do and then pack up shop and leave. So new school and old school. But unfortunately, all of the research demonstrates today that Tor was an interesting experiment. But what we know about what the NSA is capable of doing and some evidence of what has happened shows us that we just can't rely on it for one-stop shopping of being anonymous on the internet. Okay, so what I want to take away from that is there there is no you know there's a guy here ernie, you know, ernie hancock everybody know ernie hancock i love this guy the guy's brilliant okay but he always talks about wanting this just button he's like oh all you privacy guys all you security guys all you hackers and whatever you always say well you just got to do this and it's always this just and so where's this just button because how's grandma going to do this look folks grandma's not going to do it okay there is no just button for this it doesn't exist and that's why I want to start off with the attitude so you can understand the extremity coming from an absolute professional a guy that has actually been approached by DARPA and other government you know alphabet soup organizations and whatever uh, you know to work for them because he's that damned good he, they you know he says it's not easy it cannot there is no quick and easy and I would argue that that's not possible at all does anybody have any questions on this part no and boy, somebody's loud over there. <laughs> All right, um, since I got a, a larger crowd than when I started, I want to ask a quick question. How many people here have an iOS device? I won't insult you. Okay, yeah, don't worry. Nobody's perfect. Um, so <laughs> as far as iOS, I'll get that right out of the way if you're interested in iOS. The attitude is still important for you to take in, uh, but with iOS, your only chance you really have is a company called Open Whisper Systems, and they, they make a great software suite called Signal, okay? And that's all you've got as far as uh, with, with iOS to have any chance of, of having real security there. Uh, now with Android, let's get into that. Because it's not, with Android it's not that simple. That's a good thing. Like we said, the stuff isn't quick and easy. Okay? Uh, when you get into Android, you have, there's, there's kind of a misconception in the world with this. And we'll start with the software, then I'll get into hardware that you can purchase that'll allow for this, uh, you know, the, the ease of this. You have what you think of as Android is actually just Google's Android, but it's not really what Android is. Android is an open source project. It's what's called AOSP, okay? And this is a totally different thing. It doesn't come with the Google Play Store and all the stuff built into it. It's a completely different operating system, and it actually looks quite a bit different from any Google or, you know, any of these other companies, HTC and all of them, they put their little skins on for Google. Uh, all of that isn't going to be there. So it's a little more complex to use, admittedly. There's another version of Android that you can get, and that is Cyanogen Mod. And this is by the company Cyanogen Inc. Okay, and they are, the, these guys, they have come out and said, and they have validated the point I just made, that there is Google's Android, and then there's Android. 
Okay, they validated this point in saying the, the actual, the, the CEO of the company said, we are going to take Android away from Google. Now, if Google is Android, how, what, what could they possibly be taking away from them? That's because there is a distinct difference between the two. This is really, really important to understand, is that there are multiple versions of Android out there, and there's more than CyanogenMod or AOSP, uh, but all of them are built off of, it, at the end of the day, a, AOSP, so we're all thankful for that. Uh, and those, one of these two things are what you want to use if you are concerned with anonymity, privacy, and security. Otherwise, frankly, forget it, okay? You want to, this is your baseline, you want to start there. Again, understand me, I'm describing a full paranoid situation. Everything I'm telling to you, you can apply in various ways to your smartphone, to whatever device you already have, and that's fine and dandy, because in the end, the only thing we can really do is make things expensive for the NSA, okay? Make things expensive for the government. That's about, that's the best shot you've got, okay, because honestly, you know, full honesty, if the NSA knows who you are and they're tracking you, nothing I'm going to say matters. Like, it, it just doesn't, it's just too big, you know, in my opinion. That's not a defeatist view, it's just understanding, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for coming, sir. <laughs> so, all right, so we described that you're going to want to get away from Google's Android. There's AOSP, there's CyanogenMod. Let's talk about the hardware to use. Now, one of the key tenets of Dark Android, you do, again, use this information however you want, modify it to your own personal tastes and thresholds, okay? With Dark Android, you want a tablet. Forget the smartphone, okay? Again, you can, you can add the stuff onto your smartphone if you want, but again, we're, we're going a full paranoid, uh, you know, avenue with this, and once you have a SIM card, you're screwed. SIM cards recently, just in the past few months, uh, the, the largest SIM card provider in the world or creator manufacturer, Jamalto, uh, you know, admitted that their private keys had all been cracked. So pretty much anything with a SIM card, forget it. Also, uh, if you ever notice, you know, you called your, I, uh, not your ISP, but you called your mobile provider and said, hey, I'm having trouble with my phone. Okay, we'll fix that for you. And they automatically restart your phone. That's a big red flag saying you have no control over your device. They have control over your device. That's only, that only comes through the SIM card. So it's really, really important to understand that, the, that a SIM card in a tablet or a smartphone is bad news. You're not going to get the anonymity. You're not going to get the control over your device. And remember, control is freedom. Choice and control is freedom. Okay, you're not going to get that if, uh, you know, if that's the, the route you're going. There's, again, like I said, there's things, you, everything I'm going to lay out to you, you can use on your smartphone, certainly, and it's helpful. Okay, but I'm starting at the lowest, you know, at the lowest level of, of how to go with this, or maybe the highest level might be the better term. Okay, so tablets are very important. The best two tablets on the market right now to do what I'm describing that are that work with the two versions of Android that I described, which are CyanogenMod and AOSP, are there's the Sony Xperia line. They have the the X3 Compact, uh, or you know maybe even the X4 Compact. Sony of all of all ironies, is really good about open sourcing everything that they that they produce and, and releasing the code for it. Uh, so that's a very, and, and also they're waterproof, which if you're interested in that sort of thing, I think it's handy for my phone anyway. Uh, so the Sony Xperia line is one way to go. The other way is the Nexus 7 uh, 2013. Uh, what I'm describing to you, admittedly, is actually pretty actionable. You can do something with it. There is a link, if you go to darkandroid.info, you'll find in like the very first paragraph, there's a link to a Tor project. Uh, we talked about Tor there. These are guys very much concerned with, you know, anonymity, privacy, and security. Uh, they did a layout of what it would take to make a really hardened, totally hardened uh, tablet. And their base tablet was the 2013 Nexus 7. Also, if you read that, you'll see just how insanely hard it is to do this like really crazily all the way where like you know it almost gets to the point to where you're you know grabbing sand out of your backyard and baking your own processors okay i mean that's about how far the tour project goes and i don't need to go that far again what can we do we can only make this, this stuff expensive for these alphabet soup organizations okay so we, we got hardware down we have the, everybody understand you want to get away from google's android we got that Okay, and then we talked about the two tablets, the best tablets. There's other tablets that can, that can work with it, but you want to check out and make sure CyanogenMod works with it or that AOSP uh, is available for it. I think Nokia makes, they, they started making their own Android tablets again, uh, and they offer some that, that do it. But those are the two best out there. Uh, and so now let's get into some more of like the apps 
and things of that nature. And if anyone has any questions in between all of this, please feel free to raise your hand uh, and ask. With the apps, we, we talked about the attitude that you have to have, and the point is, is that you are not you are not pretending to be you, or I mean, you are pretending to not be you. Okay, you are not going to be you. Uh, this is this is really really important to have anonymity, uh, especially with the tablet. One of the things that we we read off by Steve Gibson was that you know change your Mac ID, change your, which is, has nothing to do with Apple. Uh, change your Mac address. Okay, and this is very difficult to do with tablets. That's a little bit of a problem. Okay. Uh, so, that one we really can't do, but what you can do is if you only use this device that we're talking about, this dark Android tablet, if you only use this device in, you know, at, with the different mindset, with you pretending you're not you, I don't care, you could be the Green Ranger, think of yourself however you want to think of yourself, okay, you'll, you'll be pretty good. And we talked about the other things. Again, that quote also that I read off, if you want to take more of that attitude in, is also at darkandroid.info, and you can check that out. With software that you want to start using, let's get into that. Okay. Uh, what's, what's probably, actually, I'll take a little poll, because we've got a pretty good group here. What's the most important thing you would want to do anonymously uh, with your, you know, online with your device? Anybody want to shoot something up? If not, I'll make something up. Go for it. Well, I think Buy things, right on. Silk Road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. If you're not on camera, don't worry. <laughs> Text message. Text message. Oh, that's an important one. We need to get to that. All right, so buying things. This, is a, this might be the core reason why Dark Android needs to exist, it is because right now our economy sucks, but fortunately there's something called System D. You can Wikipedia that, uh, or also known as the alternative economy, and this is where you can get whatever you want, and believe me, this economy is no joke and it's no slouch. It does $10 trillion a year in business, this whole shadow economy, if you will. So buying things is a great, great question to ask about. Uh, the first thing you'd want to do, perhaps, especially to get things within this realm, uh, would be Tor. You'd want to start there. Okay, and that's a great place to start with, uh, with software because there's an excellent group of people called the Guardian Project, and they create Orbot, uh, and there, there's a whole, a whole suite of, of different software okay, that is accessible to you uh, where it will allow, it to allow your device to access Tor. Very, very important okay, to get that. Um, and with buying things, this is another key thing. The only way really that a lot of this works, like we read, we read that quote by Steve Gibson and he talked about use cash. Buying things online, that's not going to work. You know, you can't use cash. So cryptocurrencies, and I don't just mean Bitcoin, I'm not one of those kind of guys. Uh, cryptocurrencies make this really work. And there's a lot of great wallets available for that, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but, so, you know, buying things, you want to start with Tor, uh, you want to start with, you know, a web browser that, that's secure, we'll get into the web browser in a minute. But before we get into that aspect of things, let's talk about where you're going to actually get all of this software from. Uh, my initial problem with mobile platforms in general, not just Android, this is the same problem with, uh, with Apple, with Windows, with Blackberry, they still exist, uh, is that you, can't, you generally can't independently download apps like you can with, uh, if you have a computer. You don't have to go to some kind of app store. Uh, I mean, Apple's certainly trying to make it that way, but you don't have to go to any kind of app store. You can just, you know, you go to a website, you download the EXE file or the TARG, whatever, and you're gold, and you, you just install it and you're done. Uh, that doesn't really exist much. It does a little bit, but not much with, uh, you know, with, with mobile devices. So you need an app repository at this time. I hope that changes in the future, but right now you need an app repository. And like we said, we're not using Google's Android, so we're not gonna get the Play Store. With CyanogenMod, you can put the Play Store on, but whatever, I recommend staying away from it for a lot of reasons. Um, so you want an app repository, and there's one that's already in existence that's out there that's wonderful. What it does is called FDroid, okay? And FDroid, it's f-droid.org, I believe is the website. That will give you, and everything's open source there, which is very important. Everybody know what open source is? Largely, large nods, oh, okay, yeah. Open source just means that, that you, can, you can actually take a look at the code that comprises the app uh, that you're that you're using or comprises the operating system that you're using now do you have to understand the code you know for open source to matter to you absolutely not no it's very important that things are open source because open source 
allows for, you know, it's definitely a case of where you're trusting the geeks who do know what the code is saying, all right? But the fact is, is that when it's open source, you at least have that, that bottom level of the fact that, okay, no, what this says it's doing, I can, to some degree, imagine that, yes, that's exactly what it's doing, or someone else would, would look into it. Now, there is what's called the open source, what I call the open source fallacy, which means that just because something's open source does not mean it's secure or even a good thing. Uh, open SSL is one case of that where, you know, ton, uh, you know, just a ton of the internet was running off of open SSL and it was only being developed by two guys and what happens when you do that? You end up with Heartbleed. Everybody heard of Heartbleed? It's the quote unquote the most terrible thing to happen to the internet in a decade where, you know, lots of, lots of websites uh, ran into a, you know, a whole lot of security issues which is exactly what we're talking about here. Um, so F-Droid, everything there is free, nothing is to pay for, which that's nice, free is good. Uh, there, there's no, you know, I, I think that's another fallacy too. If you don't pay for it, it can't be worth it. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. Because uh, a lot of these people do this out of passion. I don't get paid for doing darkandroid.info. I accept donations, but I don't get paid for it. I don't get paid for, you know, largely everything I do. Uh, so, no, you can get very, very wonderful things absolutely for free. So you're going to get apps that are for free out of F-Droid and apps that are open source. So you can at least have that bottom. It, it at least breaks the first barrier. It's like when somebody says to you, oh yeah, I'm an anarchist. Okay, good. We can. We don't have to talk about that state thing. Okay, so with open source, that, that's, the same, that's the same deal. Where, okay, we don't have to talk about that part of the security issue. So that, that's comforting too. So F-Droid is your best friend in this whole situation. All right, now the next best friend of the bunch is your web browser. Okay, and again, like I said earlier, you know, this is news that changes by the second. Uh, Firefox used to be the thing I would recommend. It is available on F-Droid, uh, but Firefox recently has been doing some, uh, some pretty ugly moves as far as getting away from being so open and open source. So the Firefox that's available on F-Droid is an older version. That's another very key point to having security on your device is that you have the most updated versions of whatever you are using. Uh, it's, you know, even if you're not going dark Android, if you just have your regular Android phone, update your apps all the time. Be absolutely anal with that uh, because there's so many security bugs that happen all the time. You want the latest version at any given moment. Uh, F-Droid will also, kind of like the Play Store where it has that auto update feature, it will let you know when apps need to be updated, which is very, very handy. Okay, so Firefox is not the recommendation. Um, there are, the, this is kind of the irony because I said F-Droid is your best friend. The best web browser that you can use is not available on F-Droid, unfortunately. And that is IceCat. This is a version created by the Free Software Foundation, which was created, the Free Software Foundation was created by Richard Stallman, who is an incredibly strange human being. Very, very weird. Uh, but uh, he is, if something makes him happy, let that make you happy. Because he is, I mean, he is so, such a stickler for these sort of things. Uh, and so his, his group, the, the Free Software Foundation, they've created IceCat. This is also available for desktops, and I recommend using it. Uh, and it works uh, on Android. And it's nice because, like I said earlier, wouldn't it be great if you could just go to a website and download without have, needing an app repository? Because an app store or repository where you get all your apps can be a gateway. Okay, that could be a real problem. Android rec or, uh, Amazon recently has taken down apps for no good reason other than it gets in the way of their little media empire. One of them being Cody is a very popular uh, media center app that they took down and they claimed it was because, oh, it facilitates piracy, which is ridiculous. This company that creates Cody has gone out of their way to make sure that's not true. So app repositories can be an issue in and of themselves. So since your web browser is the second most important part of this whole thing, it's very, very comforting that that actually gets, even though, I, again, it's not easy. I recognize it's not easy, but like I said, this isn't going to be easy. You're going to have to go to a website and you have to download it and then it actually is pretty easy. You know, you just hit install, Android knows what to do with it. Uh, so IceCat's your best bet. There's recently been something called the Adblock browser, which is based off of Firefox. Uh, this is one where you can also independently download it. It's not available in the f -Droid store. Uh, and again, it is based off of Firefox, so it still has all that nice open source stuff. It's made by the guys that run Adblock Plus, which is a very fine thing. I think ad blocking is wonderful. I know a lot of libertarians get annoyed by that because all their blogs are just loaded with you know, uh, advertisements so that they can make a buck off of you reading their nonsense. Uh, if you go to my website, there's no ads, none, unless it's something of my own, you know, something that, I, that I'm putting out there. Uh, I think actually you know, advertisements are trackers 
and are bad news to begin with. So having a web browser that automatically uh, blocks ads is a wonderful thing. That in mind though, you can actually, Android's very nice in that any app you run will run across the whole system. So you can download Adblock Plus independently, not the browser, just the, just the app, independently in the F-Droid store to solve that issue and I recommend uh, doing that. So we've got the web browser, we've got, uh, we talked about how to, you know, one of the quick ways to access Tor and in fact uh, IceCat, like with Tor, we talked about the Guardian project where they offer all these different apps and I mean they offer a ton. Um, they will actually, the, the Orbot, which is what makes your whole device access Tor, will make the whole make every app just go through Tor, including IceCat. So because they offer their own, I think it's called OrWeb is their own web browser for that, but it's really simplistic and I, I don't know, it's too much work in my opinion to use OrWeb. So that that's helpful on that end of things. Uh, let's see, what was what were some of the text messaging? Was that the next one that someone asked about? Okay, text messaging. Here is kind of the issue. Let, let me ask. Let me take a little survey here. How many people make phone calls? Like a lot. Okay, so pretty much everybody makes a phone call. So here's a little problem with dark Android, right? Is that there's no good way to make phone calls. It doesn't. It's just unfortunately, it's not so. My best recommendation on that, we'll go back to hardware, would to be get what's called a burner in the industry which means it's just a phone that you use, you know, you can go get like a $10 track phone, you know, a dumb phone, or a feature phone as they're called, from Walmart and use that to do your texting and all that stuff because it's just not, it's really not gonna happen very well on a dark Android device. As far as just needing to message people, there is a great app, again, available in the F-Droid store. Everything now on, from now on, by and large, that I will mention is available in the F-Droid store. Uh, is called Telegram. And this gives you all the functionality of Facebook Messenger that you can imagine. It's very, very popular here. Thanks, I'll take credit, thanks to me in New Hampshire. Uh, lots of people use it. And uh, like the activists, it's the way they, they, they transmit all their information. This is, Telegram is an app. I have, a, I have a saying, which is don't follow the money, follow the attitude. Okay, and the attitude of the creators of Telegram is right on. They are anarchists. Uh, Pavel Durov, who is a Russian, a very wealthy Russian man who actually created VK, which is a social media site uh, out there. He doesn't run VK anymore, don't go using VK. Uh, but he is, he is on board with anybody here at Porkfest, I guarantee you that. And even though some people will bring some degree of questioning to the uh, protocol that he uses for his encryption, I understand those concerns, uh, but his attitude is so spot on, I definitely recommend uh, using that. And also, Telegram is very cross-platform. Uh, you can access it via a website and all that's, you know, anything you can imagine. There's a Windows client, there's portable clients, there's all this great stuff that you can do with Telegram. It is uh, another one of your best friends. You're gonna get a lot of new best friends when you use Dark Android. Uh, I will admit though, just, just as a tip here, with Telegram, when it's done on your device, on your dark Android device, that is rock solid encryption being done right there. It's what they call client side when it's done on the device. If you access it using any other machine, uh, well, okay, so there's two, there's two settings to Telegram. There's a secret chat and then there's the still kind of network encrypted but not so secret chat, okay? And when you do it client side, that will be, and you set it for secret chat, there's, there's options, you know, do you want this to be a secret chat or whatever, that is the, that's great encryption to be using. Okay, but you will not be able to access that on any other device that you're using. It's only on that device. You can do not so secret chat, uh, and that can be accessed from any device with your little account, uh, you know, for te that you make for Telegram. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, definitely read up on any of the apps that I'm uh, that I'm listing off to you here. Uh, does anybody else? Any uh, before I, I just go down my own list? Does anybody else have any questions of what they want to do with their dark Android device? We'll do. We'll get into buying a little bit more too. Emails. Emails. Okay. Well, go ahead. But more for the application, for the apps. Yeah, yeah. Or like just what you want to do with your device. Okay. Well, go ahead. What, what's the question for the okay, apps? So the apps that I don't use, should I be updating them anyways? That you don't use? Yeah. yeah you. Don't right. Because any app, especially on Android or, or on iOS, even it doesn't matter. Uh, they will often be running in the background, and if they're running in the background and they're insecure. Uh, that's that's a real issue. Okay, so you want to update everything that you possibly can at all times. Uh, 
Are you going to be getting into financials and crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies and all that stuff? Yep, yep, we'll get right, we'll get into that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, emails is a very important one because one of the best forms of encryption that we know of is PGP. Uh, that's the one that kind of hasn't been really cracked yet. There was an issue uh, a couple years ago where, or a year ago maybe, where uh, they could tell what your, what your private key was based upon what you were typing and the FBI could listen to it through your smartphone of all wonders. See, isn't that, that's the problem with having an always on connected device. Uh, but that has been plugged to where they, they, they can't find that out uh, anymore. So PGP or GPG, which is the open source version of it, uh, is a very important thing to get used to using. Uh, there are a lot of, good, lot of good options for this. There is a uh, email app called K9. Okay, and this, this email app does everything you can imagine that an email app could do. It does what Gmail does, it does what all that stuff does. It's really, really wonderful. Uh, and you have to set up your own email address elsewhere, admittedly. Uh, I recommend trying to get into riseup.net, but uh, just don't use the word capitalism around them. Don't, don't use it around me either, but uh, don't use the word capitalism around them because they get a little funny about that. But again, do they have the right attitude? Yes, they do not want governments, and they do not, you know, they want privacy, security, anonymity, all that good stuff. So it's a great thing to use as far as getting an email address. Uh, and so with K9, you have your email address, you're good to go. Then there's also, you can get what's called Open, uh, open GPG. And there's, an, there's another one that, that's a little more complex, so I'm not going to list that off here. Uh, but Open PGP, you will download this, and it will go, it'll help, it works in concert with K9, specifically with K9. So it's really important. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> this uh, information makes people howl. So, <laughs> yeah, please. Sure. So K9 is the email, uh, the email client you want. That's the app. And then you want Open GPG is the it's, it's a an extension for K9. You want to use that, and that'll get you set up with a PGP key. Um, if you're K9, you said you get your how'd you say, get your oh, email from somewhere else. You said Yeah, riseup.net's a really good option. Um, there's other places like if you wanted to use something that was a little more mainstream, I recommend GMX.com. Uh, which is really good because their servers are not based, or most of their servers, I should say, are not based in the U.S. They have a couple in Kansas as of late, which wasn't true a few years ago, but it is now. Uh, and, you know, they're a German company, and the advantages to companies being overseas is that technically, technically, uh, they don't have to answer to the NSA. Are they going to do what the NSA says? Of course they are. Everybody does what they say, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but, you know, in the end, it makes it, like I said, more expensive for them to have to, you know, do overseas uh, filing. As it works, so uh, so that's email getting set up with a PGP key, getting used to that. Uh, I will lay out. There's a company called Tutanota. Don't ask me to spell that. Uh, Tutanota.de is the website, and that actually has a really simple web interface. Again, this isn't going to be done on your uh, on your client or you know on your on your device, but Tutanota.de uh, does a fantastic job of very easy PGP email, very well encrypted, great attitude, and they are all based in Germany. Uh, which is, uh, again, a good thing for the same reasons that we described uh, with GMX. Uh, so Tutanota is, is an excellent option, but that's all going to get done in your web browser. That's the importance of using a really great web browser that you can trust, okay, uh, is that, you know, a lot of the things we want to discuss, maybe people want to do social media, we could go into social media. Uh, social media, do you want to access Facebook and, you know, and all these things and Twitter? Uh, yeah, you're not going to find those apps on F-Droid. They, they're not going to be there. Why? Because they're, you know, they're a mess as far as anonymity and privacy and security goes. I mean, forget it, it's just, it's not there. Uh, and so what you're going to want to do as far as those things go is try as best you can. Twitter is best as far as, Twitter is the least of all evils with social media. So if you need a social media fix, that's my recommendation. But you're gonna use their websites, okay? And one of the nice things about Twitter too is that unlike the other ones, they don't have a real name policy. You can call yourself whatever you want. You can be the Black Ranger this time instead of the Green Ranger. Uh, take your pick. But just, you know, again, keep that mindset of I am not Brian Sovereign. I mean, I am, but I'm not when I use my device. So think the same way. Uh, so social media, does that cover social media? Does anybody have any questions on social media other than that? Because I, I went really fast on that. Can you just not, not use Facebook? Yeah, I... I well, I mean, that like that's a whole other subject, but yeah, no, yeah, don't use Facebook. I mean, Facebook is a, is a you know, they're a heinous company. Uh, in fact, a lot of people will say that much of what I'm describing, Tor, PGP, 
a whole bunch of other things, even like the, the client-side encryption, like Moxie Marlin Spike, who uh, actually does open whisper, system, uh, open whisper Systems that I mentioned earlier. They put that into their WhatsApp. Yes, they own WhatsApp, so don't use that. Uh, it was, it, it's been kind of a, a, you know, a confusion for me as to why is Facebook using all the right stuff, but yet this is a company that clearly doesn't care about people's privacy. You know, and it's a security nightmare. Uh, why are they using the right technologies like Tor, like PGP, and all that? And I finally came to a realization. I'll share this with you here. I've talked about it on my on my own show, Sovereign Tech. Uh, and the realization is this: is that there was was it Syrian terrorists? I believe, quote unquote, terrorists depends what what side you're on. Uh, Syrian terrorists were tracked down via WhatsApp. How did that happen? It happened because of not that WhatsApp wasn't secure, though maybe it wasn't, but the best guess we have is that WhatsApp was, you know, Facebook has collected all of this metadata. Does anybody, does everybody know what metadata is? Data about data. Data about data. That's a, that's a great description. I like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, metadata is the data, like you can encrypt everything that you're doing. Okay. Uh, you know, like what you, whatever, you know, whatever love note you, you send to, uh, you know, your gay lover or whatever. If you're not gay, that's fine. Um, but you can send that off to them and no one can read that. But what they can read about you with metadata is where you sent it from, uh, you know, and, and even, I mean, there's things like they could track, uh, I mean, you can even get tracked by metadata by the, the battery usage of each app. And this is a fact. You can look this stuff up. It's, it's all very, very real, very out in the open. Uh, that, that you can get tracked by a bunch of things, and metadata is the key here. And that's part of the reason why, again, you want to be anonymous when you're using this device that I'm describing to you. You want to pretend you are somebody else. You can be Captain Kirk, it doesn't matter. Okay, just be somebody else and still get what you want. Um, so the metadata is a big deal, and that's what I think with Facebook, with social media, with a lot of these guys, that's what they're doing, is they're actually collecting metadata on you across their various platforms, even if they use Tor, even if they use... Uh, you know, PGP, even if they use, you know, great client-side encryption and all of this, it doesn't matter. They're collecting the metadata, and so they can track who and what you are. Unless you pretend you're somebody else. You know, I haven't done this yet, but I haven't pretended to be a woman when using a dark Android device, but that, that could get very interesting. I don't know, like maybe uh, that's a good one to use. There's greenaddress.it. That's another wonderful one to use. I do not, there is a, in the Afteroid store, there is a Coinbase app available. Don't touch it. It's version 1.0. They're up to version 2.0. It hasn't been updated anymore. That is, uh, I mean, that's just a wreck waiting to happen on you uh, if you use that. Uh, my recommendation, though, might be to actually use, there's a site called Rush Wallet, okay? And this will allow you to create a website. Has, has anyone ever heard of InstaWallet? Anyone ever heard of that before? Okay, InstaWallet was like this web-based Bitcoin wallet. Unfortunately, it did some things very wrong and it got cracked. Uh, Rush Wallet was created to solve a lot of these problems. And Rush Wallet will allow you to access your Bitcoin wallet from any device you've got, from anywhere you are. Again, with Dark Android, we want, I want to give you the option to, if you have to toss this thing away, you, know, you don't want to lose your Bitcoins in that case. And so Rush Wallet is a great option uh, for this as to where, you know, and you have control of your of your keys, you know, you have the control that you want uh, when you use this uh, this service. So that's something to, to consider. A lot of the, the average things you want to do, like you want to buy something on Amazon, or to, let, let's forget about like uh, tour stuff, you want to buy something on Amazon, uh, you can use GIFT, G-Y-F-T, everybody's heard of that? They, they offer gift cards online and you can buy them with Bitcoin. Um, with that, you, you can use and you can actually get the gift cards where you can even go to Starbucks and everything. And you can do this with your dark Android device that I'm describing to you uh, through their website. You don't have to install the app. So when you think, oh, crap, this, this app doesn't exist on f -Droid. What the hell am I going to do? Just go to the website. Most websites are mobile ready and will actually you know, offer 99%, if, if not sometimes even more, uh, of the abilities that the app has. Okay, so that's really, the web browser is a real, real key to this. Um, so that's that's what I would do as far as cryptocurrencies is probably Rush Wallet, though certainly uh, you can independently install Mycelium, which is a great Android wallet, a great team. Uh, in fact, one of the guys from Mycelium is walking around here, uh, just a wonderful gentleman. Uh, and you can you can independently download that, much like I described with IceCat. Okay, so that's an option too. But uh, but that's that's my thoughts um, on that one. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this point? 
anything. Ask me, ask me anything on the whole matter. I see some hemming and hawing. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we got we got our web browser. Uh, games. How about games? Anybody a gamer? Got a gamer? Right on. Okay. Uh, games are actually. This is kind of shocking. Uh, games are very easy to do uh, on a dark Android device. Really great, popular, high-end. You know, even console quality gaming is possible on a dark Android device. So you can have fun with this if you want too, while you're waiting for, you know, it's some shady pickup deal or something to go on. Uh, okay. Uh, and how this works is with Humble Bundle, humblebundle.com. Okay, and you can buy games there directly with Bitcoin. Uh, so that's a nice option. And they will let you, like we described with IceCat and we were just saying with Mycelium, they will let you download the .apk file, the actual file of the game itself independently from the website. Uh, there's no need for an app. The Humble Bundle app is supposed to be available outside of the Play Store at some point, um, but for right now you can just do it right from the website so you can have all the fun in the world. And I'm, I mean, really great games. Uh, I mean, Shadowrun, you know, which I love the Shadowrun series. I imagine anybody interested in the talk I'm giving right now would be interested in the Shadowrun series as well, because it's all about living with, with you know, in between the cracks. Uh, of the uh, you know, this larger network, uh, you know, surveillance society, not just surveillance state, but surveillance society that we uh, that we're living in. Oh, Shadowrun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really, really cool uh, uh, series. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, so gaming, totally possible to do. Uh, what what else does anybody else? Uh, oh, maps. Here's a big one. This is one that that a lot of people wonder about because everybody relies on Google Maps. How many people are using Google Maps? Everybody, all right. <laughs> uh, in the Afteroid store, there's a great option. It's called OSM AND. It's a weird name, okay? OSM AND, and it's open source. And actually, the OSM, and I don't know what AND. I'm guessing AND stands for Android, but the OSM actually stands for Open Streets uh, uh, Map, or it's like the Open Streets Project, okay? And this is a open source, independently done uh, mapping you know, mapping system backend that this accesses. There's other, uh, there's other software that uses the, uh, the Open, uh, open Streets uh, project. But, uh, but Awesome AND, as I call it, or OSM AND, is probably the best of the bunch. The nice thing about it is that it actually bests Google at its own game in one way. The maps, admittedly, may not be as good as Google's, what is, other than what Apple's trying to do right now. Uh, but it works offline. So you can install uh, you know everything. You know the entire world of maps onto your, uh, you know, onto your uh, tablet, which I think a lot of people would ask about because, you know, how, if I'm going to use a tablet, then that only works on Wi-Fi, and I don't live in Japan where there's Wi-Fi literally everywhere, just like, you know, beaming into you. Uh, you know, how am I going? How's this going to work? And that's how it can work. Is that a lot of the apps that I've described to you actually work offline? It's a side project that I'm working on called Offline Android that I, I haven't totally compiled yet, but uh, this is certainly part of the basis for that. So you have mapping, social media, websites, uh, or not, yeah, websites of course, um, you know, buying things, like we mentioned gift, using Bitcoin. Uh, there's other, other cryptocurrencies, using those gets into strange areas. I totally recommend using them, but uh, there needs to be a lot more development as far as apps uh, for those. To work, like I think there's a Litecoin wallet available in uh, in the F Droid. Um, I I definitely think you know, especially with the the big debate going on in Bitcoin right now, and the chance that there's going to be a hard fork to look very seriously at uh, at altcoins, and maybe if there's interest shown uh, by a lot more people, that this stuff will get developed more so uh, and be available open source in the F Droid store. Uh, Etc. Even in the Bitcoin space, I've emailed companies myself and said, "Hey, are you going to make this available in the Afterite store?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, we're seriously considering it, but we got to go through this, 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 this." And it's like, "All right, well, I'm not using you. You know, forget it." Uh, okay, so I, I think that covers the bulk of what people would want to do with their devices. There's something I didn't cover. I do recommend checking out darkandroid.info for more of that. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Go for it. How do you feel about Waze? Waze? It's owned by Google. 
Yeah, uh, it's it's great. I love the fact that you know people warn you when cops are coming. I mean, that's phenomenal, man. And actually, in New Hampshire, there's a great group on there, the New England Subaru owners, and uh, they, I mean, they they patrol the streets. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, but it's unfortunate it's owned by Google. I recommend staying away. This is a very important point as well. Edward Snowden himself has said, beware of Google and Facebook. Get away from these people. And I think, you know, th there's, there's a lot of freedom one can achieve, a lot of privacy, a lot of security one can achieve if you get away from these two companies. And it's absolutely possible uh, to do. You know, I, I don't think it's an outlandish, outlandish reach because, like I said, I, you know, and if there's something else you have, feel free to email me as well. There's at the website. There's a great way to, to contact me, even with PGP. All that stuff's available there. If there's something you want to do that you don't see available, Dark Android, I want to know because I want to make it possible, or at least enlighten people to, uh, you know, certainly to how it's possible. Um, any any other questions? I mean, is this whole kind of talk you're giving here correlated on Dark Android? Yeah, uh, it's kind of wrapped up there. Uh, and again, you, also paying attention to the blog is super important because this stuff changes uh, all the time. Uh, it really does, especially like the news with Firefox. You know, this is something else too with the web browser. This is if say you don't want to go all the way and you want to run this on a, and you don't want to run this on a tablet. You just want to take some of what I've described and use it on your smartphone. Okay, uh, one of the easiest ways to get a ton of security on your device is to use a different web browser other than like Chrome or, or whatever they're putting out there using Firefox even or IceCAD in this case and the reason being is they actually use separate security certificates okay which this is what registers everything that you know all the the incoming and outgoing information that comes to your device okay it uses a separate uh, security certificates that actually won't get affected by what would affect Android in general and especially if, like I said, if you're going to rely on your web browser a whole lot more now, that's really important to, you know, to, uh, what was it, Verizon, they had this, uh, uh, some kind of a super bug or whatever, they had a, I, I forget, it was a cook, super cookie, not super bug, but it was a super cookie that actually, like, fed you ads and tracked you wherever you went and put it on top of, it wasn't, it wasn't, if you went to a website with Chrome, the ad that you saw wasn't being put on by the website, it was being pushed to you by Verizon. But if you use Firefox, or IceCat in this case, you wouldn't have gotten that ad. And the super cookie also wouldn't track where you are because these ads would be based upon your geolocation. Okay, so getting away from these companies, there's a ton of security just to be had from doing that. That's why I say you can adapt this to your own thresholds. You know, you don't have to go all the way like I've described. I'm just giving you like, like the, you know, really the baseband or the, you know, the base level of where this goes. Uh, something else, baseband, I just mentioned it. I want to bring that up to you quickly. Uh, ARM processors that all these devices run off of. If you can find devices, there's recently, like with smartphones as well, um, if say, let's say, no one asked this, but let's say if you ask me what's the best smartphone to buy, because I told you what the best tablets were. What's the best smartphone to buy if you want to do this? Uh, there is the Zen, the Asus, Zen Touch 2 that just came out recently and the reason that this smartphone is so good it has great specs it has tons of RAM all that good stuff I mean you know specs are kind of a meaningless things these days but it runs on an Intel processor not on ARM and the importance of that is twofold one is that ARM processors are designed to accept without question every single transmission that it receives and it's called the the baseband firmware it's a huge security hole it's a major problem uh, I mean, you know, that's that's part of the reason why when you know the, your uh, your mobile uh, provider sends the signal to restart your phone, that's why it can restart. There's a SIM card, and then the baseband uh, firmware just says, "Yeah, sure, fine." And this is in every ARM processor, and it's not going to change, not for the not for the foreseeable future. So the the Intel processor gives you a little more comfortability on that end. The second reason that so ARM is just totally insecure. But again, if you don't have a SIM card to where if you don't have the radio on, that being the SIM card or Wi-Fi on all the time, you don't, you can't get any signals in. So there's a security there. Uh, so if you can find tablets as well that have the the Intel processors in them, that is really really great. But the other reason that it's nice to have an Intel processor in one of these devices is that you could take a very inexpensive device, and that Zen Touch 2 actually only costs I think $200 for the base model of it, which that's pretty cheap for a smartphone. Uh, the other nice thing is that you could potentially run other operating systems on it beyond Android. Forget AOSP or Cyanogen. You could throw 
Gentoo Linux on there, or whatever flavor of Linux you happen to like. There's all, the, you know, your world opens up when you get away from ARM processors. So that's something, that's kind of an advanced thing, but that's something to consider uh, as well. In the end, with all of this, more, more questions? Sorry. Yeah. Related to the Intel processor, no, right? um, the Intel Altera deal, is that likely to uh, affect data collection? Yeah, so recently Intel, right, yeah, Intel recently acquired Altera. Um, this is going to get into the area of Internet of Things. Everybody know what Internet of Things is? Yeah, so this is like putting chips in like even your light bulbs. There's Bitcoin companies that want to do that. They're ridiculous. Uh, Internet of Things is, should be called Internet of Targets. Any connected device you have to anything else is a security risk on your part. Okay, so as far as Intel and Altera, Altera is an issue in that that'll, that'll be more applicable to Internet of Things. Um, so I don't think that's going to affect so they make, much. They make the data collection chips um, that are used in all these um, metadata collection centers. Right, that's yeah, why yeah. Altel, or that's why Intel wants Altera. Now, is this likely to affect what they put in the phones? At the moment, no, but if it does, darkandroid.info will tell you. Uh, so, but that's a great point to bring up. And the reason I don't think it'll happen now is because Intel is so, they're trying so hard to get into the mobile processor space that they need to keep things as open uh, and not complex for all of these other companies to be able to, to use it. So uh, the attitude, again, you know, I want to go back to the attitude. The attitude is the single most important thing. You need to act anonymous when you're using this device. Uh, if you don't want to act anonymous with it, still use all of this encryption. Make it expensive uh, for them. You know, and a lot of these things, you know, we, we talk about Internet of Targets or Internet of Things for a moment here. Uh, you know, all these devices that for some reason, you know, can uh, turn off your water or do all these other, like the Nest uh, thermostats and all of this, get, just don't, don't do it. D don't, don't even touch it. It's so nice that there's an app for it and it works with your phone and all of that, uh, but don't bother because it's just another, you know, it's a security hole. It's a huge security hole, okay? And you don't, you don't want that. And honestly, you can't turn off your own water? Come on, seriously. It's like, well, if you go on vacation, if you go on vacation, what if the water pops? How many people here go on vacation, like, all the time? No, okay. How many, how many, is, like, Porkfest is, I mean, I don't know, we're away seven days. This is like the only vacation I think that we ever really take. I mean, and come on. I, I just, I don't think people that are concerned about this sort of thing uh, really are on vacation that much where that's even a problem. So uh, I, I don't think, there, there's, there's nothing in, in Internet of Targets, Internet of Things, uh, that's really that, uh, that helpful. So uh, one last tip, if you want to get really paranoid, rip the microphone out of your device. Just, just snip it, open it up, snip it, get it, get rid of it. Uh, that's that's a real, a real problem. So, but that's that's going really extreme. Uh, any other questions? I think I got a few more minutes, or I'll just wrap it up. Okay. All right. So please do visit my site, darkandroid.info. Also, real quick, I uh, am a video game developer, and I created my first video game. This is the very first anarchist video game pretty much in the world, and it's available on major gaming uh, platforms, including Desura. Uh, the game is called Hypercronius. You can see, you will see an ad for that, but it's not an invasive ad by any means. If you go to darkandroid.info, uh, feel free to grab a copy of it uh, if you like. And of course, you know, donations are welcome at darkandroid.info. And donations to Alt Expo, who I am very grateful for uh, allowing me to have this talk and, and connect with all of you. So thank you. Thank you.